Hi, and welcome back to MLab1231, Parasitology and Mycology. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster, and this is going to be our first of three presentations on the class Trematoda. The objectives for this presentation are going to be to identify the taxonomy which Trematoda belong, describe the general biological characteristics of the trematodes, explain how humans are infected, list morphological characteristics of common trematodes that cause human infection, and explain the life cycle of the trematodes listed in this presentation. Some of the terminology that we're going to cover that's relevant to the anatomy of the trematode uh, begins with the acetabula, which are muscular oral suckers that are found on the ventral surface of the flukes, the ventral meaning the front part, Cercaria, which is a stage of trematode development that begins from the daughter cell of the sporocysts and is also the final developmental stage of the first intermediate host, which is the snail. The metacercaria is important to know as it is the infective stage for humans and also the stage of hermaphroditic trematode development when the cercaria has shed its tail, secreted its protective wall, and insisted on itself on aquatic or intermediate hosts such as a predatory fish. The mericidium is the first stage of ciliated free-swimming trematode, and it is also the stage which infects the first intermediate host, the snail. So, the mericidium is the stage which infects the first intermediate host. After it goes through some developmental processes, it comes out as a cercaria from the first intermediate host. Also important to know. Schistosoma is a genus of digenia known as the blood flukes. Trematoda, which is what this presentation is going to cover, are a medically significant class of parasite that belong to the phylum platyhelminthus, the flatworms. Digenia is a subclass of trematoda, which includes the flukes, and flukes are also known as trematodes. So you'll see that word used interchangeably. An overview of some of the trematodes we're going to cover can be broken down into three categories, uh, depending on what tissue type the parasite infects. Intestinal flukes are going to be fasciola, Fasciolopsis buski. Liver and lungs, infecting the liver specifically, is Fasciola hepatica and Clinorchis sciensis. And the lung fluke in this category is going to be Paragonimus westermanni. The blood flukes are the schistosomes we talked about in the, the terminology. And those are Schistosoma mansoni, Schistosoma hematobium, and Schistosoma japonicum. All of these belong to the phylum platyhelminthus. They are all flatworms. And all of these parasites, with the trematodes, are parasites of vertebrates, and they require one or more intermediate host. Most of these species are hermaphroditic, excluding the schistosomes. And they all, depending on the species, range from a few millimeters to several centimeters in length. Most of the trematodes have an operculum in the egg, which is used as an escape hatch for the mericidium. And to detect the schist the, all the trematodes, uh, concentration can't often be done as the eggs are quite large. So a sedimentation procedure is recommended for detection of eggs in stool specimens. So a general life cycle of a trematode begins with the eggs leaving through the host's feces or sputum. Those enter fresh water and the mericidium hatches through the operculum to, from the egg. The mericidium then penetrates a species-specific snail, depending on the species of parasite, in fact, different species of snail. Those, metis, those meta, meta, mericidium, <coughs> excuse me, those mericidium 
then go through several developmental processes, um, developing into a sporocyst. The sporocysts develop into radii, which then develop and produce, produce cercaria. The cercaria exits the first intermediate host and insists on a water plant as a metacercaria, or the cercaria enters a second intermediate host like a predatory fish, um, like a bass or a larger fish that would eat a snail or a, a crayfish. Humans then come along and ingest these plants or second intermediate hosts uh, containing the metasercaria and become infected. Those metasercaria digest in the intestinal tract and exists, and the existed metasercaria then mature into an adult stage worm where they produce eggs and continues the life cycle. The anatomy of the trematodes um, are non-segmented, unlike the cestodes, the class we just talked about. They are flattened dorsal ventrally, they're still flatworms, but they have leaf-shaped bodies. They also contain two cup-shaped suckers. They're both used for attachment. One is found orally, and one is the ventral sucker. Uh, the trematodes, also unlike cestodes, have a digestive system which begins with the oral cavity located at the center of the oral sucker, followed by a muscular esophagus, then branching into two intestinal tracts and ending with an excretory duct. Most species of trematode are hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female reproductive systems, and these Hermaphroditic trematodes live in the intestine or other organs such as the liver and lung. Unisexual trematodes, including the schistosoma, have either male or female reproductive systems, not both, and they live in the blood. No, and this is why they're known as the blood flukes. So here's a diagram of trematode anatomy. This is a hermaphroditic trematode. So beginning here, with the oral sucker and the oral cavity located in the center of the oral sucker, the sucker followed by the muscular uh, esophagus, then branching into two branches are the intestinal tracts, which go down the length of the body of the trematode, and they evacuate waste through the excretory pore located at the posterior end. This, again, is a hermaphroditic trematode, meaning they have both sexes, including ovaries, and a seminal receptacle. So these species um, would contain both male and female reproductive systems. So that's going to be the conclusion of the first part for the class Trematoda. We'll pick this back up with class Trematoda part two.